All right, hey AP Chemistry. Just wanted to talk a bit and debrief about the lab that you performed on Friday. So the lab was called Molecular Mass of a Volatile Liquid, and you used this Florence flask. Make sure you know the name of these pieces of glassware, because even if I mention it in a question on a quiz or a test, you know what shape we're looking at. Um, so this was your Florence flask, and as soon as you got it, I asked some of you, was this empty? And some of you were like, oh yeah, it was empty, it was empty, it was empty, yeah. But in chemistry, we have to remember that we rarely have only empty space unless we're in a vacuum. So I'm going to draw a particular diagram of what we really had in this flask to begin with. And now this purple's a little bit eh. All right, so in this flask, we had air. Oh, of course, this purple isn't working. We had air, okay? So in the flask, there was air particles, which is gas. So in the air, we have N2. We'll have maybe some O2, some CO2, okay? So in the flask, we have air. Then, later on we put our volatile liquid into the flask. So I'm gonna try and redraw this flask again. Okay. And so I'm gonna draw the air particles in there. Nope, I'm gonna have to use a different color. The air particles in there. And let's say red is gonna be our volatile liquid. So I'll draw like a little little splooshy thing and I'll draw particles of liquid close together okay so this is our volatile liquid and this is our air okay now I asked you and kind of proposed that since this flask is somewhat closed because on the top we had foil with a little pinhole. So if I have this and I put like, I'll just have to pretend like that's the foil on top. I propose that conservation of matter says that if this volatile liquid begins to vaporize, go directly into or go into the gas phase, that it should take up the space of the container and the mass of this liquid before, so mass of the liquid, we did say it should be equal to the mass of the gas, and that's because of COM, conservation of matter. I don't feel like writing all that out, okay? However, when we were heating it up, we really couldn't tell when all of our air had escaped and I had nothing but volatile liquid in there because some of you saw that there was some bubbling and, and boiling occurring, and we have to remember that in order for this volatile liquid in the gas phase to take up the entire space of this container, this Florence flask, it needs to push out the air molecule. So that was the real purpose for having the hole in the top of the Florence flask. So I'm going to draw it again. And this time, I'm going to say, let's say we have the boiling. I'm going to draw it, and I'm going to have our air particles out because they escape through that pinhole. Air particle is out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to have the same amount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So let's five more. Three, four, five. Okay. I want to make sure for conservation of matter that if I had third, let's I'm making up a number. If I had thirteen air particles here, that those thirteen air particles had escaped, and that since this is covered that if I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight volatile liquid particles, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That those eight particles should have taken up the space of the container because it was in the gas phase and that only my air particles were displaced. But we don't have very fancy particle level goggles. I wish they had those. So we couldn't see when or if any of our particles may have began to escape. 
So not only would the air particles escape, but maybe some of our volatile liquid particles would escape. So some of you are like, oh, what is the purpose of, or what was the purpose of weighing our flask after? It was to make sure that none of your particles had escaped. And so I'm going to say mass of the gas, and this I'm going to call this after. Some of you got it being lower than the mass of the liquid. And that was because some of your particles had escaped. And that's okay. You're not wrong. It's just we couldn't tell the moment when all of our air was completely displaced and we just had our volatile liquid that turned into a gas. And in order for our calculations to work, we need the volume that this gas takes up, which you all discovered was this flask, and it should have been about 250 milliliters. I'm not accepting that answer because you were supposed to get the actual volume by filling this Florence flask up with water and putting it into a graduated cylinder. Very similar to the airbag lab. So we have a volume that this gas fills up, but we also need to know what mass of gas that was. And so you need to have your mass before minus your mass after. And that could tell me how much of my liquid had escaped, but this mass after is going to be your mass of the gas. And if you want to, and you should in your conclusions and calculations, this change in mass, delta in mass, is the mass of the unknown that had escaped. And so I'm putting this subtraction here so you could talk about this in your conclusion and error analysis that I can't use the original mass of the liquid anymore because some of it had escaped. If this change in mass was zero, then that means you did a great job. All of your liquid stayed within and boiled within the container. Okay? Um, and so you'll have your mass of your gas, you have your volume. I told you to get your pressure from weather channel. So you have your pressure, your volume, um, and your mass. And I asked and assumed that the temperature was about 100 degrees Celsius. The temperature will be about 100 degrees Celsius, but I told some of your groups to make sure, poke it with a thermometer, and some of you were getting somewhere between 90 degrees Celsius and 120 degrees Celsius. So if you use the 100 degrees Celsius as your assumption in your calculations and your molar mass is a bit off, make sure in your conclusion and your error analysis you say, hey, we never actually got the temperature of the gas and we just assumed it was 100 because the water was boiling. And I had told some of you that your gas or your liquid boiled at some temperatures that were lower than 100 and some of you got it at higher than 100. So you should be within error when you do your calculations. And so we have the mass of the gas, the pressure, the volume, and temperature, and R is a constant. Make sure you know to use this equation, PV equals NRT. You may not realize this, but you're using the mass way later. The mass is not going into this equation. You have your pressure, your volume, and your temperature. R is a constant. You're solving for N moles. And then if I want my molar mass, um, and as some of you pointed out, they use M as their molar mass. Some of you thought it was molarity. If I want my molar mass, it's going to be equal to my mass divided by my moles. So that's my mass in grams divided by my moles N that I solve for there. Okay? And that is how you're looking at this lab. If some of you did not get the mass of the gas after, you're going to have a large amount of error, your, mol your molar mass may be off by like a factor of 10. Make sure you include that in your conclusion and error analysis. Another thing that we will be looking at that you have to understand is if I had two gases in this flask, what are the sum of the pressures equal to? Okay, and that's our next question and where we're going to go on our next class, but you need to know what the sum of the individual pressures of the gases equals. 
okay? And that you're gonna find in the sections that you were supposed to outline. Okay, so I hope this little debrief about what happened to your flask and mass and how we do calculations was helpful. Make sure you use this and zoom in and figure out how to do your calculations based off of this video, and I will probably not use too much class time to explain this as well, and I will direct you to this video. All right, hope this was helpful.